Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm the director of the Brockton Public Library System. On behalf of the library trustees, the Library Foundation, and SEIU 888, it is my honor to welcome you to the Thomas P. Kennedy main branch of the Brockton Public Library. There you go. <laughs> Tonight we have a special evening of art that celebrates our diverse city, our diverse commonwealth, and our diverse nation. Tonight we celebrate our parent cultures and our current cultures and demonstrate how it is through our differences that we unite and create a common lexicon, a common heritage, and a uniquely American experience. We have for you tonight 10 poets from across Massachusetts, poets ranging from professors, high school students, and our own local poets that will present their original poetry in the language of their heritage, then translated into English. We will also be enjoying performances by the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church Paradosi dancers in full regalia, and a soloist from the Brockton Tabernacle Church Haitian Choir. And let's give a special thanks to the artist behind the evening's events, Mr. Philip Hesaurus, who is a local poet. Thank you, Philip. Yeah. And before we begin, it is my honor to introduce to you the Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez, who will offer remarks. Mayor Rodriguez has over 25 years of experience as a manager and administrator in operations and social service including serving as the Director of Communications and Community Services for the City of Brockton, a position he held in the Mayor Harrington administration. Mayor Rodriguez is serving as Mayor for the City of Brockton, being appointed by City Council in a special vote due to the untimely death of Bill Carpenter. He is currently employed as the Child Protection Specialist for the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. He serves on the numerous boards of directors for the city, as well as being a former member of Cape Verde's National Parliament. Mayor Rodriguez is a veteran of the United States Navy and holds a degree in human services and community, re community relations from the University of Massachusetts and is on, in the process of completing a master's in applied linguistics at UMass Boston. Finally, and primarily, Mayor Rodriguez is a husband of 31 years and the proud father of three daughters and one grandchild. And Mayor, you and I have something in common. I too am the father of daughters. <laughs> I, also, I also have a grandchild too. So. Uh, without further delay, please uh, let me introduce Mayor Rodriguez. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know I, this was gonna be this formal. But I, uh, I, want, I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, that one grandchild is now two grandchildren. Uh, I have a two-month-old grandson as well. It's interesting. It's interesting that I have three daughters, but now the, th the two grandchil grandchildren that I have are both boys. Isn't that interesting? But I, uh, it's my honor to be here tonight because this is the Brockton Public Library. You know, the jewel in our downtown, this beautiful facility that you see here today. But it's also a facility that celebrates the greatness of our community. And it gives me a great deal of honor and pride to be here today to share a couple of my thoughts in terms of the diversity that this city faces. As you might know, I was not born in this country. I was born in Cape Verde, and I grew up in Angola. Uh, in downtown Africa. I came to Brockton as a teenager and have been a proud Brocktonian for the last 40 something years. Uh, served in the military, uh, brought up my family here and truly honored to call Brockton home. I have been mayor in the city now for the last uh, three and a half months or so after the passing of uh, Mayor Carpenter. And it's been somewhat difficult because it's been one bump after another because as I said on the night that I took over this, uh, the administration of the city, this is not my administration, it's Carpenter's administration. So the bumps that he left, or the work that he had left to be completed, um, has become the work that I have to do, plus some things that I wanted to do myself. But one thing that I can tell you that I'm honored to, uh, 
to do is to continue to serve in the city as its chief, op, uh, chief uh, op, um, executive officer, but at the same time to enjoy the diversity that our community brings and has. I've said it from many times that the diversity of Brockton hasn't really changed. Brockton was a diverse community back in the days. It continues to be a diverse community. Just the, the places where people are coming from has changed. Uh, where, uh, where years ago people were coming from Sweden, uh, Germany, uh, Italy, Ireland, they're now coming from Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Cape Verde, and some of the other places. So Brockton was a city of immigrants. It continues to be a city of immigrants, a very proud community of immigrants that will continue to serve its immigrant population. And it's with things like this, uh, events like this that we bring forward and talk about the beautiful diversity that Brockton has, that the beautiful diversity that Brockton should continue to have that makes us all proud to call Brockton home. And I'm honored to be here tonight. I can't wait to hear some of the, uh, the, the poetry that will come along from the various different uh, ethnic groups in our city and the different languages that individuals uh, speak in this community. As I uh, said before, I speak a few languages myself, but sometimes I was a little disappointed that my preferred language was not on this list, gibberish. <laughs> so that's another one of the languages that I speak, especially when you're tired after a long day. You know, you open your mouth, nothing comes out, but uh, that's not the reason why we're here. We're here to listen to some beautiful, beautiful poetry. And I thank you all for being a part of Brockton, to continue to be a part of Brockton, and please do not give up on us. That's one thing I can ask and beg everybody. Do not give up on us. Brockton has a lot to offer. We have a long road ahead, but we've got some beautiful things coming down the pipeline. And again, do not give up on us. Continue to love your city. Continue to support the city. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that I'll continue to support you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, your host tonight is Ali Brioso. Where is Ali? Right, right, oh, right there. Oh, well, let me introduce you, Ali. Uh, born, in two, born from two diverse Latino communities, El Salvador and San, Santa Domingo, Ali is known as a passionate community organizer in her 20 plus years as a resident in Brockton. Ali is currently an environmental corporate maintenance planner, president and founder of Diverse Initiatives Neighborhood Association, creatively taking diverse initiatives in building our community up together in a unified manner. Ali is also host of the uh, poetry series Everyone Has a Voice that we have here every third Saturday of the month. And um, to put it short, uh, Ali is a force of nature. Ali. There was a reason why I was trying to get up here quick, because now I have to step it up to the expectations of the um, brief bio that was provided. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, it is a sincere honor and a pleasure to be at this point of the next level of expansion of embracing diversity in this community. Most for um, embracing the families, the individuals that are here to share in their languages, their ethnicity, a little bit of the history of what brought them here today. and. I love being surrounded in this area, this entity, because this is the library. And we are so caught up in our modern times and forget and embrace the energies that come within the library, its rich history. So I am going to now tarry along because I'm excited. I want to hear these languages. And I'm excited to introduce the first poet that will be coming forward because as Mayor Moses emphasized, We've been diverse in the city of Brockton. I, too, am passionate of this community. My hometown being Cambridge, grew up born in the heart of MIT and Harvard to a wonderful mother who migrated from El Salvador to a father who was already here, uh, but originated and was born in the Dominican Republic. So now I am bilingual with two languages. I am in highly impressed by those who are multilingual, and it comes with the history of where their languages originated, who landed in their country. And it's also intriguing to me to understand the origins of diversity. We have our first poet. And this is in the areas of the Arabic language. 
to me it's important because in this community we have recently evolved within the last years with the Middle Eastern culture. We have people of Muslim faith coming from Lebanese, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Syria who are actually very close friends of mine. And the one language that I've become familiar that is, has become their language is the Arabic language. We write from left to right. They begin from right to left. I'm already backwards sometimes. So I'm like, this is very interesting because somewhere in their history, this was a format to their ability to learn their writings, their speech, and has developed into their culture. So it is my pleasure to introduce, and I'm going to give a brief bio first, and I see you back there, so I'm giving you direct eye contact. <laughs> so um, anybody who knows me, I can come out of context with the energy because I like to be here and be present for the now. So we have Dr. Suasan Sahara, born in Beirut, Lebanon, where she received her formal education in Bachelor's of Arts in English, in the English language and literature with a minor in translation from the Lebanese University, holds a Master of Education in T-E-S-O-L. And before I go further to the remaining, it is important to understand these acronyms because here in the city of Brockton, we have ESL and we have the T-E-S-O-L. And the T-E-S-O-L actually stands for T for Teaching English Speakers of Other Languages. So we have professionals who take their time to study, not only go into the associate's programs, but to the bachelor's, then become masters. Because I myself, being born to an immigrant whose native language is Spanish, and growing up, she's teaching me what she's learned from her country, Spanish. But as I tarried along, I realized that as we in America go take English grammar and writings, we have to take them to perfect our speech. And with this being said, the T-E-S-O-L is very important and very bribing even in the midst of our community. So, and a Doctor of Education degree in the Language, Literacy, and Cultural Studies from Boston University. Dr. Swanson is a chair of the Elementary Education Department and a professor of Arabic and ESL, English as a Second Language, in Massasoit, bringing it back to our community. We are rich in this community, rich with education, culture, and diversity. The poetry she writes was influenced by Arab culture and the Lebanese war. Let's welcome Dr. Swanson Sahara. Good evening, and thank you for having me today. Before I start reading my poetry, I would like a moment to explain what this prop I have in front of me to kind of put my poetry in context a little bit. So Arab culture is really a smoking culture. And let me qualify it by that. I do not smoke, nor do I condone smoking. But the hookah that usually uses um, flavored tobacco usually has water that fills up in here. And in that, there's like flavored tobacco. And the most popular flavor is the apple flavor. So they put it up here. And then with the bottom of this, we will put holes in it and then put a piece of charcoal on top. And then you smoke it. So when it has water in the bottom, it gurgles. And it's a, it, is, it is part of the social construct of Arab culture. And people everywhere will use it and spend time with it. So I grew up with hookahs, but I was young when I grew up with hookahs, and I wasn't a smoker, but my mother would always you know, host some parties at home, and I would be helping make the hookah all the time for the guests at home. So I call this piece of poetry that I wrote the forbidden apple, because the apple flavored tobacco, and then I was not allowed to smoke it. So, <laughs> so this is where the construct comes from. So, التفاحة الممنوعة أرجيلة هي لي وأنا لها برغم أنف جبار عالية فيها الماء وفيها النار 
ودخان ذو نكهة التفاح راوية فحم لها على الرأس جالسا في وسط القلوب هو راسيا وصوت لها كعصفور مغرد يشجي الأذان كصوت الحبيب مناديا هي إفطاري وغذائي وكل يوم لا أستغني عنها في عشائيا كم حرب قامت عليها ووضعت أوزارها وكم صلح كانت له راعيا فلها في استقام حلول عدة منها إلى المصدر مصفيا إن كان للطبيب جروح مداويا فهي لكل سقيم عليل شافيا فما أحلاها بأنواع التفاح المعسل خفيفة وخمسة نجوم راقية <laughs> and now I'm going to go over the English version so that you can put in context what I just read. So the poem says, The Forbidden Apple. And it says, Oh hookah, you are mine and I am yours, despite the wishes of all who are high and mighty. You are my fire and my water. You are my sweet apple smoked flavor. The embers of your charcoal glow and tell my story of waiting and yearning to taste your glory. Your water bubbles smoothly, chirp like a nightingale. Your call to me is that of a beloved. As I often prepare you for guests, you brighten my mornings and soothe my siestas. And as an evening's roll, I yearn for you even more. How many wars have been fought in your presence? How many truces were reached over your shared puffs? You have puffed away too many disputes and helped many get trouble off their chest. You are so fine with all your flavors, and your apple flavor is a heavenly treat. If a doctor can heal my bodily wounds, you are the medicine to my yearning soul. Thank you. <laughs> so my second poem is also requires a little contextualization. Uh, I grew up in Lebanon. I came to the United States as a graduate student. Um, my country, Lebanon, right now is undergoing a little bit of protest. The people are revolting, they are tired of corrupt government, and they have been in the streets for almost 12 days. And to display unity, they actually created a human chain that spread from the north of Lebanon to the south of Lebanon, holding hands and near the ocean and displaying the unity to show the government that we are not going to step down. We are not going to be divided by war, by religion, by any kind of distinction. So it's something that has kind of made me a little bit nostalgic. And I wrote this poem not long time ago, just a couple, few weeks ago, when this whole started. So the poem says, from far away. And it says, min ba'idun. لأني غريب ولأن لبنان وطني الحبيب بعيد عنه وإني هنا في اشتياق إليه أنادي يا لبناني الباقي باق فيرجع لي من ندائي نحيب يتفجر عنه الصدى من بعيد وأحس إني بدار الغريب عنه قد عبرت المدى إلى عالم من ردي لا يجيب من بعيد ندائي نداء شعب ينتفض بثورة ضد الحكام والعهد بلادي على مفترق طريق هواها في لساني ودمي بمجدها قلب الرقيق ويدعو لها فمي رباه ابعد الخطر عن بلد الحبيب Wahfaz ahlahu ya mujib. I'll read the English version. And it says, from afar. 
For I am a sojourner, for I am of my beloved Lebanon. I call to you in eagerness from afar. My beloved Lebanon, continue to hold on. The cries answer my calling, their echoes explode from afar. I feel that I am a stranger, for I have been gone way for long. Away in a world where homesickness calls and cannot be answered from afar. Yet I call on you from afar. I call as all citizens do in a protest of my own to mirror yours, peacefully revolting with all of you against tyranny from afar. My homeland is at a crossroad and I feel its pain from afar. I feel it in my hands, my tongue, my blood, and my soft heart aches from afar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salasan. That was beautiful. And one of the many reasons why people come to America, it's not always because they want to come for the American dream uh, or they have family here that has already established himself, but war. Things that happen in their countries, they're forced to come here. And this is why in America, we have to embrace the diversity, even in our communities, in our town, and welcome the people that come. Anyone who chooses to come by force, who, who has come by force, has not chosen to come. Because many people love their country. Many people love their culture. Many people have lost love, uh, loved ones because of the war, because of the fighting, the disparities, and they come here broken. In America, we ought to embrace them with love. Let's worry about the legal, the legalities, about the immigration laws, about the indifferences, and no child, children, or families should ever be detained in an inhumane way in this country. We ought to be unified. We ought to embrace diversity, and it begins first home in our communities such as this. So I just wanted to emphasize on that because when one hears what's going on in their country and does not have the ability to be there to support or embrace the hurt and pain, they're hurting and in pain. So I thank, I thank her because she took a moment to put aside anything that she may have already articulated but she wanted to share what's going on now and bring it to light. And as well, I would never look at smoke shops the same again. Because every time I see a hookah or I see people, I actually have a grasp, a history and knowledge of where a hookah came from. Because I always thought they were just nice vessels of art creatively, but they actually have history behind it. Thank you. Now we're going to move forward. And it is a true pleasure. I have gotten the opportunity to have met this poet, beautiful lady, and um, in our most recent series of Everyone Has a Voice. It's a monthly health series. Her name is Christina Liu. She is of Cantonese heritage. I'm going to read her bio, but I would love for her to come and share because as enthusiastic as I am, she is as well, respectively speaking. I have that privilege and that pleasure. And her parents escaped China's cultural revolution, and this is what I'm emphasizing. Uh, settling with her to live in New York City's Chinatown. This backdrop informs much of her writing. She holds a bachelor's in writing, literature, and publishing, and a master's in fine arts in creative writing from Emerson College, currently an academic advisor and a writing instructor at Boston Architectural College. She is a member of Street Feet Woman Nonprofit Writing and Performance Ensemble. It is my pleasure to welcome you once again here in our Brockton Public Library. Come, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, and I, I wish I had bought a hookah with me tonight. <laughs> I really do, because I could use it right now. <laughs> um, I, I did have an insight as we were talking about the, the nature, the movement of language from from right to left, as opposed to the way our eyes usually scan English, which is from left to right. Uh, laterally, 
and not up and down. So in, in the Chinese written language, it's um, not only from right to left, it's also up to down. So you can understand why my brain is a little different. Um, but it's also a wonderful metaphor for, um, for immigration and the American experience and actually celebrating diversity, not just in terms of our skin color and you know our, our countries of origin, but the very nature of ourselves itself with embedded within letters, no matter which language they belong to. So thank you. That was, um, that was really wild for me as I was sitting here. Um, I, I will read my first poem in Cantonese and then in English. Mai 他感觉他脚锁匙我金蒙a transgression at seven. I stole that ring within sight, rust glimmering under neon punk, under Canal Street's trash, its poverty for song, a sparrow for distinction between rust or sun, dust or marrow. Mother bought her own ring some years before, before nights of glass shards, howling dogs, machine gunned eyes, scent of MSG from father, a sham. Swimming together away from China, he held to her feet, hair, her bloated belly. She filled me with sea, tentacles alight, his heart pure ink, regret. Dawn, Seven years, then ten years later, she threw small stars into their dingy abyss. Father caught the keys each time. I watched him enter, burn peanut oil, eat bitter melon. Wages in his pocket jingle to nothing. For years, she wanted pieces of diamond, chip, opal, jade, some emblem of the gold mountain promise but not my father's waiter shirt, his archetypal badge of surrender, a sigh. Where are my gold slippers, my throne, my heart, my sea? Mother chokes salt, begins to fetch. Mopo.
，我出身係女人，但唔係真係女人。呢個係韓國女人嚟嘅，佢講好耐以前，今年過咗一月三號，二八一九年。呢、这個係個舊犯，黃色國家，白色皮膚。喺我啲物度，我皮膚開始有樹咁，開始有狗咁，開始個腳仔，開始個樹板，我啲眼都黃曬啊！睇死嘢，我個心冇細佬哥，個女人開始冇心咁，乜嘢都冇，係個玻璃像，又舊，一味要問可唔可以攞錢啊？可唔可以攞錢啊？啲水邋遢曬，水、河、紙，啲女人同埋老人冇曬哥哥，冇曬女，全部都燶曬，成間屋有血，個個崩咗。個個攞垃圾，啲女人一啲心定都冇，一啲心定冇曬。我係出生做女人，但我唔係女人，我未好似女人咁住。佢哋好叻，佢哋毛毛冇婆，佢哋牙啲骨好大聲，乜嘢都冇，一啲都冇曬，好聲。佢啲 B B， 佢啲手，佢啲荷，佢啲骨，開始搏抹抹布咁，冇人可以聽到講乜嘢，冇曬雀仔聽佢哋講嘢，冇曬雀仔，又咪升歌。Spencer， this is for the Korean comfort woman, um Kim Bok Dong, who died this year, um. In January, on January 3rd, 2019, at the age of 91, and I just happened upon her story um, of being a Korean comfort woman for Japanese soldiers. And one of her quotes um, in several of the news articles really grabbed my attention, which is to say, by being a comfort woman, which is a euphemism for a sex slave, I was born as a woman, but never lived as a woman. Spinster, I was born as a woman, but never lived as a woman. Here is my old rice, yellow toenails, white skin flakes clinging to opaque tights. Here is my bark of skin scratching against you, mongrel, raven-clawed, furtive branch. There, my jaundiced eyes glint towards crows. This is a decaying womb. Woman is vessel carried out in ancient urns in search of shape, beggar moving from grass huts to city alleys. Here is brackish water, river mud, papyrus, wells inked by drowned girls and the aunt's conjuring daughters. Here is chimney and suit, ropes on railway tracks. Blood on the walls, those burned at stakes, those who picked up nuclear waste, the comfort woman who knew no comfort. I was born a woman, but I never lived as a woman. Wise crones, glorious witches. They rattle their bones and dentures, alight with the freedom of nothing left. Wombs, lips, hips grinding rocks. Hallelujahs heard by no one, no sparrows to carry on. Thank you. Thank you again, Christina. And as you referenced, it's, the diversity is not just pertaining to the ethnicity and culture. We also have features that come about that brings us in a diverse manner. When we think about uh, the Asian culture, uh, there's various various types of ethnic background, countries, and families and individuals that come. Different dialects from Cantonese to Mandarin, 
And we also have to understand that even the shapes of eyes. Sometimes we wonder, even here in America, where um, my children's last name are Lee, and they happen to have slanted eyes. And according to my understanding, I'm Dominican and Salvadorian. They're biracial with the black culture of the Southern, but their last name is L-E-E -E Lee. And, and their aunts and uncles have slanted eyes. And I state that only in the emphasis that we do not truly know how diversified we are in our genetics, in our blood. And I know that many, many, there's the Western trade, okay? There's a lot of slavery that has taken place in the Asian culture. Even till today, there's a lot of struggle there. There's a lot of hurt. There are, we are in our comfort zone here in America, fighting for the simplest, most foolish things ever. There are people actually being sold, traded throughout this country. And human trafficking originates from those entities. But that, they're not just, we're not just talking about sex slaves, we're also talking about just slaves of people who are abused, misused, and forced to do things that they don't want to do and children who are birthed into these slavery formats. And this is another reason why we have to embrace diversity in this country, because people are here, again, for all many different reasons. It is my true pleasure, and we have a babe. We actually have two, but I've come to know this next poet. She's a Brockton High School student. It, I am so, she's in my heart. She's totally in my heart, because I've met her last year. And um, she came, at last year to Everyone Has a Voice, and she has matured and grown since. Her name is Carly De Miranda Pires, and before I call her up, she's, her heritage, her culture, and her family is from the Cape Verdean community. In the Cape Verdean, Cape Verde is actually part of Africa. Carly is an active 16-year-old Brockton High School student of our city here in Brockton. She uses poetry to show the hardships that she entails. From her, she's still a youth, a babe, but she has grown. But it helps her cope with the challenges that teenagers face in our society. Not only is it hard and challenging as a youth in our society, but a youth that comes from foreign culture and is trying to grow up in our today's society. It does not change. I've had my challenges growing up. I am content and grateful to know that she is aspiring. She's found a way through her writing, through her poetry, and through her forms of expression to not only encourage herself, but her peers. Sometimes it takes a youth to reach another youth. And we need to encourage and support our youth who found a voice and the strength to come about. And she presents her poetry so that lis listeners may understand her ways of life and how she copes with her, with her life day to day. What I would like to do is, I don't need to express anymore because she is our youth. She has articulated herself. I would like for her to come. And I would like to welcome her in a way that from this day moving forward, I would like everyone who's here and aware to visually see her, to give her all the support she needs because she is now a junior in preparation for college. And she's our babe in the city of Brockton, our student and definitely needs all the support. But now let her voice be heard. Something touched you, I felt that too. This is your moment, and it must be perfect timing, right? I feel that energy, come on, come on. I see you, thanks, Ali. I'm gonna talk Spanish, but I think you can understand. Sorry, it's a little bit emotional for me. Um, thank you so much, Ali, for introducing me, and thank you so much, guys, for coming out. <laughs> um, what I really want to come here today to mainly say is that it it's an amazing community to grow up into, especially a Caribbean Creole community. You learn different things when you're a child. Different things when you're a child differ when you're a teenager because when you're a teenager you grow up inside of a uh in a simulated american society so it's just kind of like you have to differentiate from when you're at home with like your vovo or with like your mom 
to when you go to school and you have like American teachers where they're just like you need to learn this, this, and this and proper like uh, proper etiquette in America. So um, <laughs> sorry, it's quite emotional. But um, as a teenager and growing up with mental health issues, my Caribbean family didn't really understand. They weren't as educated when they came to America about different things that happened. They didn't know why they were upset. They didn't know why they were angry. They just knew that this happened when this event began. So, unfortunately, I do not have the Caribbean Creole translated version, mainly because my father said it would be too, it would be too difficult for me to understand. And also, uh, I just don't have it, I'm sorry. But there's a little bit of background as to this poem. It's a little saying that I use sometimes whenever I feel like, you know, not dealing with something. Well, not, not dealing with something, it was just like taking myself out of the situation to pay attention to myself, because I'm quite a selfless person. A lot of people tell me that. So sometimes I have to be selfish. And it's good to allow yourself to be selfish when you're such a very selfless person. So there's a saying. It's called Ekanarukumi, which means it has nothing to do with me, it's above me now, you know, just basically, I'm done. So, Ekanarukumi, an old saying that has been used by the elders of my native land. It has nothing to do with me. From petty drama at school to issues with my four-year-old sisters, I find my zen by saying myself, as soon as the issue is situated, Ekanarukumi. My true drug is the success success of the situation being dealt, put aside, marked as completed. It is the only legal drug that is acceptable in my mind, but if you are if you are aiming to change your life. If you have a life where you reward yourself with not objects, but your words, it is a life that I want to have. The life where I'm able to lay my head down without readjusting, the life where I allow myself to rest without wondering about what other issues await me, it has nothing to do with me. Until then, life will meet again when the sun rises. Thank you. Thank you again, and thank you, Carly. And if you want to continue to hear Carly's voice, welcome to Everyone Has a Voice, because she's found a home, and this is where she comes, and she shares her poetry. Carly, you have our support. We're a phone call away, community away, and we're here for you. I want to take this moment now. We're going to break from our poetry readings because we're now going to enjoy diversity and culture in a form of dance. The Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church, under the direction of Penny Buterbach, is going to perform a dance of the Paradosi Dancers is the name of the group. Paradosi Dancing is a type and form of ballet. I am now going to welcome Penny Buterbach so she can share this great, and introdu introduce the great dancers of the Greek Orthodox Church. Welcome. Good evening, thank you. We are so pleased and honored to be with you tonight and share in the Voices of Diversity. We, uh, as you probably know, there is a significant Greek population here in the city of Brockton, so we are pleased to join you all. My name is Penny Buterba. I am the director of a uh, dance group. We perform um, authentic Greek folk dances from throughout the mainland and island of, islands of Greece. And um, the name of our group is called Paradosi. And in Greek, Paradosi is, means tradition. So part of what these kids are learning is not merely the footwork, but the traditions, uh, because each of the dances from each of the regions is quite distinct. So you'll notice a lot of stylistic differences, for example, in island dances as compared to mainland dances, which are a lot more earthy and down. But today, what we have is a super treat for you. Our dancers are all attired in authentic um, uh, costumes from the island of Crete, which is in the Aegean. And um, the dances we'll be performing are also all island dances. We have a suite 
for you, um, beginning with uh, uh, a song from um, Kalimnos, also in the Aegean. We have dances from the island of Crete, and we also have a, a lively dance called Icariotico from uh, Icaria. And our finale will be a Cretan dance with a modern twist called Pendozali, and the folklore has it that that dance was used by um, the ancient Cretans to exercise the Cretan soldiers, and you'll understand when you see the dance uh, why that is. So I'm uh, thrilled to, uh, to introduce you officially to the Paradosi dancers. This is our senior group, by the way. We have three groups that make up Paradosi. These are our senior performers, and uh, they are comprised of middle and high school uh, students. We have a junior and a peewee group that are basically feeder groups that uh, will eventually be dancing with uh, the seniors. So without further ado, if I could remove move the, uh, the microphone and... Uh, off we go.
νητιά Με στη μοναξιά που δεν την αντέχω Άλλο πηγιά γιατί πως θα δω Γιατί λαφταρώ την αγάπη μου και το χωριό Έχει μαύρο πόνο στην καρδιά Δίκο στην τροφιά, δίκο σαν καλιά Δίκο στα γλυκιά μου τα φιλιά Κι αφού με πονά, κι αφού μ' αγαπά Είναι κρίμα να είναι μοναγιά Και μια μέρα θα την παντρεύτω Με στην καρδιά μια γλυκιά βραδιά Θα του κάψουμε με τα βιολιά Και θα χορέψουμε μαζί και δυο Το σκοπό τον οικαριωτικό Θα γλεντήσουμε, θα με πείσουμε τους καρμούς να λησμονήσουμε Με στην καρδιά και σαν τα πουλιά Θα έχουμε κι δυο ζεστή φωλιά Τι 
Καλή νύχτα έχω actually go to the Greek festival. We have the Greek Orthodox Church here in Brockton, but I am going to commit next year, I'm going to be there to support. And if I have to rearrange my schedule, I will be there because embracing diversity is coming out of your comfort zone, making an arrangement in advance, in advance and presenting yourself. In that, next year, I shall enjoy Greek food at the Greek festival. <laughs> now we're going to continue to move forward, one of our other babes. It was a pleasure in meeting this young lady at Everyone Has a Voice. She came to our opening series, and her name is Misu Yorvina Fofana. She is a beautiful, yes, we can give her a round of applause. She's born in the United States and raised in Guinea, Conakry. Guinea? is part of West Africa. Its national language is French. When we think of French, we automatically think of France. There's many, many diverse, different cultural backgrounds that links with similar similarities of a type of language, but has been embraced by different different individuals, different countries that has embraced the language and made it theirs. So that means that throughout generations in years, children are being embraced and brought up to the language as we have our own in America called English. It is because it is, has, been edu has been taught to us in an educated format. She is an active Brockton High School student. Ms. Sue was introduced to poetry writing from her English and poetry classes. Early on, she realized the impact of her voice. And when she speaks, you'll see that her confidence is there. She continuously to build herself and empower herself with her, wor her words and actively utilizes in a bilingual format. She's invested more into writing when she became aware of its range limit. She also realized with her words, she has a new way of expressing herself. When you find the power, but the ability and know what actually in how to use words, it is very powerful. If you have not had the confidence, you find that you're building yourself with confidence every time you speak a word. It builds power. 
And when our youth finds that within themselves, it's amazing. And Ms. Sue, we're also here to support you, as well as I emphasize that with Carly, because you're one of our active students in preparation for future prospects in college. She also realizes that with her words, she has a new way of expressing herself more trustworthily than she sometimes could with her voice. She articulates her writings by composing poetry and any other aspects of entities that she composes her words to express herself. Ms. Sue does believe she could transcend time and better convey her emotions and thoughts to future generations. Her poems are often the results of her childhood experiences, memories, and her sudden inspirations on themes of all kinds, ranging from love to her family going through her life in both African and American societies. She is here, I'm going to welcome her. She's going to read her poems in her family's cultural native language, as well as embracing hers in the English format. Welcome, Ms. Sue, my pleasure again. So, hi everyone, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> so at first when um, Sir Philip called me to um, partic participate in this event, I wanted to write a poem about diversity or having a voice because of self-diversity. But then every time I started to write a poem about diversity, I wasn't really able to finish it or like I couldn't convey my feelings um, well enough like um, as much as I wanted to express them. So I switched to voices and it still remained the same. And then I was wondering on the internet and I found this poem very similar to like poems I used to um, recite when I was little in elementary school. So I was, and then it made me realize that diversity wasn't just being different in acceptation. It was about home. We are here in Brockton from different backgrounds, different cultures, religions, physical traits, and we all consider Brockton home. So I wanted to write a poem about that called Les Souvenirs d'une tendre enfance. Viens, viens que je te montre ma maison. Mon taudit tu l'appelleras du haut de ta montagne d'argent. Mais n'est-ce mon chez moi précieux si j'y tiens autant que toi à tes richesses? Je m'y abrite la nuit d'orage sous son toit de paille épais. Je m'y protège du froid sous ma couette en raffia. Et lorsque je me sens perdue, je me sens toujours vers ces murs pour me repérer. N'est-ce mon chez moi, mon chez moi précieux que ton château aux façades scintillantes Je m'y sens comme une reine sans les biens qui accompagnent le titre. N'est-ce ma maison semblable à un château lorsque elle est la forteresse contre toutes mes peines, tous mes maux Ma maison est mon étoile du nord. Elle brille le plus pour moi et remène, rem, euh, reste mon repère. Depuis toujours, elle est mon harmonie, ma lumière. J'y retourne chaque été que mon cœur me permet et chaque printemps qui s'offre à mes yeux. L'immense armée de souvenirs que j'y ai amassés défend toujours mon amour pour elle et accroît encore plus ma nostalgie. Aujourd'hui, je regarde autour de moi et je ne vois rien de ces murs en ciment ni de ces meubles en bois ciré. Je ne sens rien de sa douce odeur de terre mouillée, ni de son air aux arômes diverses. Je n'ai à l'oreille que les gazouillis des oiseaux rythmant mes matinées d'antan et les cancans provenant du lac d'à côté. Ma maison est un paradis perdu que seul moi peut retrouver. Ma maison cachée entre forêts et océans me souhaite constamment la bienvenue. Aujourd'hui, elle est loin derrière moi. Ses murs, ses fenêtres, ses meubles, ses odeurs, peu à peu se fondent dans un décor passif. Pourrais-je reconnaître mon palais si mes voyages se prolongent encore et toujours plus loin de ces baies Et mon palais pourra-t-il me reconnaître si je m'en éloigne trop longtemps Serais-je toujours la reine de ce domaine si je l'abandonne aux intempéries Devrais-je le peindre sur le canvas de ma peau à l'encre de mon sang pour ne jamais l'oublier Car de ces deux, jamais je ne pourrai me séparer. Ma maison, ma belle maison, Construite de mes efforts, rayonne un peu plus chaque jour dans mes souvenirs. Et c'est à elle un jour que j'aimerais revenir. Merci. Now, I'll translate it in English so you guys can understand. Um, the title means Memories of a Sweet Childhood. Come, come and let me show you my house. My hovel, you will call it from your heap of gold coins. But is in my home precious if I hold onto it as much as you to your riches? I take shelter on stormy nights under its thick straw roof. 
It protects me from the cold as I lay under my raffia duvet. And when I feel lost, I always turn to its walls to spot me. Is in my home precious, as precious as your castle with sparkling facades, if I feel like a queen without the goods accompanying the titles? Is in my house the same as a castle when it's for, it is a fortress against all my troubles, all my pains? My home is my North Star. It shines the most to me and remains my landmark. My house has always um, meant harmony to me, and in my dark days, it is light. I go back there every summer that my heart allows me, and every spring that presents itself to my eyes. My thoughts are consistently turning to my house, my slum, my palace. The immense army of memories that I gathered there still defends my love for it and increases even more my nostalgia. Today, I look around me and I can't find any of its cement walls nor its furniture in wax wood. I do not sense any of its sweet, sweet smell of wet earth nor of its hot, slightly floral tinted air. I only have for memory the chirping of birds that punctuated my mornings and the ducks go gossip from the lake next to it. My house is a lost paradise that only I can find. My house, hidden between forests and oceans, is the source of my happiness. Today it, it is five, far behind me. Its walls, its windows, its furniture, and the flower adorning its humble garden all gradually blend into a passive decor, the past. Could I recognize my home if I travel, if my travels stretch further and further away from it? And my home, will it, will it recognize me if I go away for too long? Will I remain the queen of this castle if I abandon it to the extreme weather? Should I paint it on the canvas of my skin, in the, skin, in the ink of my blood, to never forget it? Because of those two, never could I detach myself. My house, my beautiful house, built of my efforts, radiant a little more every time in my memories. It is the one I one day want to come back to. Thank you. She has a beautiful smile, doesn't she? Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely life fulfilled. You continue to encourage that you continue forward above and beyond and aspire for greatness. We are now going to move forward, and, um, and actually, I'm compelled to share a little bit and uh, an emphasis of our next poet. Our next poet is German, and um, his name is James G.H. Moore. If we want to know what G.H. stands for, he definitely can share that for us. And um, Mr. Moore, it is a pleasure to welcome you. And the one of the emphasis that I want to want to collaborate on now, because we are in November, there was a treaty between Germany and the United States dating back to the 1920s. That says it's almost about 100 years. And in that, the reason why uh, in, I am going to put a few points there, and then I'm just going to welcome him. And, before I do that, I'm going to read his bio. When someone signs a peace treaty, it generally means that two parties in opposing sides have come to or a humble way to accept the disparities, the fatalities, and everything that have brought the discord. The greatest thing that stands in a peace treaty is, is that people are willing to accept their wrongs as long as there's a common ground of mutual understanding from each side, respectively stating. It originated in the month of August, but November 11th, we in this country embraced Veterans Day. The peace treaty became actually effective, correct me, November 11th of 1921 in regards to the peace treaty between Germany and America. The, I'm using the word peace because diversity, unity, it all signifies peace. Peace humble, in humbleness. And this is a season to be thankful, to be thoughtful, and most to embrace <coughs> the peace in the history of rich in culture. James is a poet, a novelist, a screenwriter, and a playwright with a bachelor's and a master's in English, and two 
Master's in Fine Arts Poetry Program, residencies. James has taught English at several colleges and now teaches TV and film production at Bridgewater State. Bridgewater State University is a known local state to the South Shore that has opened many doors to many students even in this area in the city of Brockton that continues to have evolved venues and honors our current students and past students from Massasoit Community College. I'm definitely, definitely heartfelt to introduce you. I've come to know people and my brother's son through his marriage has graduated with a bachelor's in criminal justice at Bridgewater State. So it's great to have a Bridgewater State staff, a poet, and an active member of our community here in the South Shore, Southeastern, right close to home, which is Brockton. James has been married for 48 years. That's commitment, dedication, and definitely respected. <laughs> marriages nowadays are marriages nowadays. To embrace diversity is embracing the longevity of commitment. James, you have daughters and two granddaughters. And I see you're part of, as we started our opening, the men stating that they're full of daughters. So God bless to you, your family, and welcome and come and share your poetry. Ooh -wee. Um, <clears throat> a little surprise uh, as this little thing that I wrote today will uh, reveal. Um, I have a diverse background, a number of nationalities mixing into me, and uh, it's, it's very... Let me go into the, the piece that I wrote. Um, where is Josh? Is Josh still here? Oh, Josh. Josh is one of my students. Graduate from, from uh, BSU. Okay, the title of this is Thoughts from the Varied Backgrounds on November 1st, just after Halloween. Oh, uh, one of the surprises is that I am not translating this into German. I don't do Sisyphean things. Pushing the rock up and having it roll down on me, I, that would be a disaster. But I have used German in this in a couple of places for effect. And uh, a couple of other languages as well. Away from the backyard, the whole bird bath is stored in the garage with the coming months of snow and ice cannot fracture its ability to hold water, like the old cracked bird bath leaning against the lichen-covered cedar fence, concrete waiting for a simple good night, good night, good night, gute Nacht, gute Nacht, gute Nacht, says a voice I have never heard of my German grandfather who came to America on a dream and carried his best friend's legs up the elevator from the mine collapse somewhere in Pennsylvania until his best friend demanded to hold his own legs. Sie sind mein. Sie sind mein, bitte. Sie sind mein. They're mine. They're mine. Please. They're mine. And took them back and cradled them like small children and died a kind of whole. Voices stir and wash against my buried self and then my conscious one, like the sea tide flowing under a harvest moon up inlets and out across mud flats, lapping against my current tongue with dialects I cannot fathom. Good night from Poland, Dobranok, and Lithuania. Labanat, Labanaktis, and Belarusia, Dobranok Bay, and Ireland, Slan, and Wales, Nosda, and Scotland, 
Marishim Liebel. All those great grandparents traveled, married, had families, emigrated, and some came here, and I am ignorant of their tongues. Worried more about the voices I know from every day waking up 26,000 times now, and each time using the new voice I find when I part my lips. Tongues and lips and vocal cords make words and songs, and I must listen intently. More often, I must listen intently to know the ancient sounds that let my daily voices make sense and live aware enough to say good night, gute nacht, dobranok, labanaktis, dobranak bai, slam, nosta, marshim liba. Good night. Thank you again, James. And uh, while we see a lot of luxury cars here in America, you have to thank Germany for that too. BMWs, Audi, Mercedes, Porsches, all the, those good vehicles, they come from Germany. And they actually considered one of the top t uh, 20, um, 25, actually, in our economic growth and development throughout the country. I mean, throughout, internationally speaking. Now we're going to move forward, and um, Philip Hassaris is actually the founder, the one who has been inspired, the one and the reason why we're here today, and we'll continue to move forward with creative arts, expressive words through the various entities in our community. Philip has now put me here forward as a host, this is Philip's podium. This is Philip's doing. This is Philip's creativity. This is Philip Hassaris. And he's waving me down because he knows I'm emphasizing his name. I think I'm going to start my first full poem called Philip. <laughs> so Philip originates in his ethnic cultural background is from Greece. He's Greek. He is a proud Brockton poet, author of three books of poetry, coordinator of the Brockton Library poetry series, Everyone Has a Voice, that I currently host, thanks to Philip. And he also coordinates the poetry and exhibit, Soar Without Limits, Heal through the Healings Through the Arts, and Philip is the facilitator of Expressive Healings Workshops. We actually experienced this, and he actually is one of the reasons why one of our ending closing poets is actually inspired, encouraged, and will be speaking or closer to our closing because she attended the Expressive Healings workshops. And it's important because writer block, writer's block is real. And what that means is that Philip understood certain elements and entities that he struggled with. Respect to his loss, to his beloved, his other half, his forever one, that one day he will meet again. I love you for that, I just want you to know like, I feel a lot of emotion. Because when you lose somebody that is the rib that came out of you, and the reason why you continue to exist, he has daughters who teach in a Brockton public school system. He has grandchildren that inspire him and give him the life and the energy and encourage him. But he has this. He has us. I thank everyone who has come here. Because we're not just here supporting diversity, the beautiful Brockton Public Library, but we're here hugging Philip to let him know his existence, his humanity, his perseverance, his strength, his agility. Yes, Philip, I'm going there. <laughs> it's loved, felt, and we thank you. And I thank you because this is my first time doing the annual event. This is my second year doing the series. I have been to the Boys and Girls Club. He has brought expressive healings to see the diverse children of our community be able to express themselves, articulate themselves. Uh, we're not talking as of now the youth in our teen, but the elementary age is huge. And he utilizes with actual statues, he 
collects, he collects them and he brings them about because it's an open way for someone to have something in their hand visibly to begin to expand and articulate what they see, how they feel, and what they get out of it. I am now gonna pass this over to Philip because through the state for support groups, he's in coping with medical crisis and bereavement. Actually, what Philip does outside of all these other entities, he takes time to go to places and facilities. Hopefully, he is, his venue with the, the VA opens up. But there are certain entities in our communities that individuals cannot come to these, these, these gatherings, our workshops, or even things that are challenging in our communities and in our streets, from homelessness to elderly, just a variety of entities. Philip brings his tools and he says, I will help you because he has helped himself first. Philip Fisaris, welcome. Before I begin, can we show our appreciation for Allie? Come on. My grandparents fled their beloved Greece separately for fear of persecution from the Turks. Sound familiar? After World War I, they migrated to the United States, found each other, fell in love, married, making Brockton their home. In 1925, my mother was born. The year before, 1924, on a little island in Greece, named Siphnos, in the village of Gostadal, 4,825 miles from Brockton. My father was born. After World War II, my father joined the merchant marines of Greece as to make money to support his mother, brothers, and sisters. Where he was the youngest, it was his responsibility. He found his way to New York, where his shipmates brought him along on leave to Brockton to visit friends. There, he met my mother, fell in love, married, but just as it is now, my father then was an illegal immigrant and had to cross the border into Canada and then re-enter with my mother to become legal. Here I am. I was immersed in the Greek culture. Sunday school, Greek school, anything associated with church and traditions until I became a teenager. Then, one word, rebel. Still, I kept my Greek culture, but the language slowly slipped away. I met Linda, fell in love, married, and had two awesome daughters that I can proudly say are both teachers here in Brockton. As you have heard the story of my family, it is the story of many of us here tonight, how we separately found our way here like threads. We wove a tapestry, our language, customs, beliefs. As my late wife would say, we are the same, only different. The poem I am about to read is an awakening, my reawakening to connect with my heritage, my grandparents, fathers, mothers, language. I hope to not to honor not only them, but you also on this night. We celebrate our diversity, trumpet our ethnicity, rejoice in being American. Krimisi anegnodisi. Ime igata pu akinete, iakuda pu anadiete apotun andria no polisi, to fidi, irichni, to derma, tu arga, ectimena. 
Είμαι με το λαμβάνομαι σε εποχέ ονειστημένο χειμώνα που δημιουργεί τα ζέστα δάκρυα τη άνοξη. Καλοκαιρινών ηλιοστάσεω επεκμήκνηση. Ο ήλιο αντινοβέλει με τον ακόμα φωτισμό τη γη. Ήλιο, φεγγάρι, μοιράζονται στον ουρανό τη φάση μου το ανακλόμενο φωτό. Είμαι ο Σολομό που κολομπάω πίσω στην κατακοζή το πολύ που οδοεί τη μήτρα τη φωλιά. Μεταναστάβοντα, γυρίζοντα πίσω στην εξοικειώσω πέρα από τον κινδυνό. Ο αυτοκρατόρα πινκιούνο εξοντήλε για να πιόνο συνδέονται πριν και μετά. Όμω το κοιμητισμό αποτέλεσμα. Μια μόνο σταγνό νερού και για τον νερό, τον αέρα. Επεφτελώνει τη μνήμη του σε σκαλό την κριτική αναγνώριση. Είμαι το μωρό ανακατεύοντα και ξύπνησα στον παιδί, εφηνών από εντάξει ενηλικία φωτισμένη. Το ρημό που υπάρχει. Έχει υπάρχει, θα υπάρχει. Είμαι μια πολύ μικρή στεγνό στο γιάρο σύμπον, κοιμητισμό, κοιμητισμό, κοιμητισμό. Critical recognition. I am the cat stretching. The bear emerging from hibernation, the snake shedding its skin slowly, deliberately. I am the changing seasons, the sleepy winter ushering the warm tears of spring, the summer solstice elongating, sun radiant in its still illumination of earth, sun, moon share the sky, my phases of reflecting light. I am the salmon swimming back to origin, the bird homing to womb of nest, migrating, circling back to familiarity, past the danger. The emperor penguin exhausted his perilous passage. I call out to you, critical, Recognition. I am the baby stirring, the child awakening, the adolescent developing, the adult enlightened, the mature that exists, has existed, will exist. I am a very small drop in the liquid universe. Rippling, rippling, rippling. Thank you, Philip. Now we're going to take another intermission and um, another diverse group of cultural families and background that has drastically evolved in the city of Brockton is the Haitian community. I have many Haitian friends in the city of Brockton as well as um, biracial mix with our Latino families. And it's not with my Dominican side, you would think, because we share an island, but it's actually with my El Salvadorian side. I have nieces that are El Salvadorian and of Haitian descent in their families. So it's a beautiful culture. Um, I'm going to hold off on touching briefly uh, in regards to the Haitian culture, because I want you to just enjoy the Brockton Tabernacle Church Haitian Choir. I'm, just, yes. I'm giving contact directly to him because he comes to everyone has a voice, of course. <laughs> and I, it's under the direction of Maestro Gulux Thomas. And at this time, I'm going to welcome, if we can move this, Yes. For the choir. Yes. Nice to see you again. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm very delighted to be here today. 
Unfortunately, tonight I know our choir has done its best to be here. Um, at the end, we realized that most people had to work. Finally, we got a group that was going to come, and the oh, my school was here as well. Finally, the group becomes smaller and smaller. So we said, no matter what, we had 10 people who were coming to sing as a group. Finally, one of them ended up in the emergency room. The other one went with her. Finally, we said, we know we're not going to let the choir sing, but we're going to have a sister sing for us tonight. Uh, so, Pierre, yes. So Sister Pierre, sing for us. <laughs> she kept telling me I'm not ready, but I said you can do it. Yes, you can. <laughs> Solitaire, voyage au cours et vous. Vésiné, nouvelle terre, qui te prépare pour nous. Pas de la peine sublime. Verset de mes ressemblés, verset de mes ressemblés, amis vés, amis vés, avec nous, verset de mes ressemblés, amis vés, amis vés, avec nous. Dans cette terre nouvelle, voyagez au courez-vous. Il est court en motel que Christ prépare pour nous. Là toujours, en sa présence, plaide la de la mede souffrance plé de la mede souffrance ami ve ami ve les avec nous plé de la mede souffrance ami ve ami ve les avec nous Bien faible votre côté, quel danger apportez-vous? Les toupies sans nous protéger et sans en jette avec nous. L'éternel est notre chef nous avons, nous avons Jésus pour guider. Nous avons Jésus pour guider. Ami V, Ami V, nous avec nous. Tout vivra nous de la place. Ce bonheur est-il pour nous? Venez en ce jour de grâce, le ciel est ouvert pour nous. À la source de la veille, Dieu les mêmes, Dieu les mêmes vous convie. Dieu les mêmes vous convie. Ami ve, ami ve les avec nous. Dieu les mêmes et vous convie. Ami ve, ami ve les avec nous. Bien faible votre côté, quel danger apportez-vous? 
ลิตุปิสานุปเทศิเอตัวอาเจตเบกนูลิตเนนเอนัจเจเดนุสาบันนุสาบันจิสิปุกิดนุสาบันเจสุยปุกิดอามิเบอามิเบเลสาเบกนูนุสาบันเจสุยปุกิดอามิเบอามิเบเลสาเบกนู Tout le m o n e de la place, si b o n e e t i l pour nous. i l y a s e j o u r de g r a c e l e s c i e l est o u v e r t pour nous. À la soupe, c'est de la v e i l e d i e les mêmes, d i e les mêmes et vous c o n v i e e d i e l e m e s et vous c o n v e i l e z a m i v e z a m i v e z e z avec nous. Thank you. Was beautiful, and um, the reason why I was smiling over to Dr. Joseph p o l y k e f i because he's actually a great supporter, and he attends various sessions of Everyone Has a Voice, and he's very proud of his Haitian culture. And there was no pol- the word apology needed to be used, and it wasn't used because when you're a faith believer, you believe that everything is always right on time. And yes, we just went to church. <laughs> He did because I don't have to understand the language, but the one thing and the beauty of diversity and embracing it is that when you have two people who do not know each other's language, but understand love, faith, and spirituality, and when you listen to her voice without any instruments, you feel the story that she's expressing herself. You feel the love. And most, you feel the powerful words that state encouragement, hope, belief. We will tarry along. I'm going to show a little love to Haiti, not only because it shares an island with um, half of my family's heritage, which is the Dominican Republic, because I have not yet visited over there. But if I ever come to the island, I'm going to visit both sides, not just one. And um, because the Haitian people have migrated. To our country, and we haven't shown the love and respect that we should have when we embrace another cultural group of people with skin tones similar to mine. I'm respectably speaking because I've known a lot of youth in the past, and I don't know the struggles now because my children, my daughter, has great Haitian family friends. And she's always bringing some kind of food home, like mom, try this. And I actually have a friend who's a business owner who actually cooks his cultural food, and his mom is like our mother here. As a faith believer, we call our elder females mothers, because you don't have to be their child; they will love you as a mother. And that's what we need in our community. We need mothers. We need fathers. We need to take it back to we're going to love and care for each other. Whether your child is mine or my child is yours, or there's a child stuck in the DCF foster care system, that's another story in itself. That's diversity, and it's very, very sad. Dr. Joseph p o l y k e f i is a poet, writer, thinker. Was born in Haiti. In the mid '80s, Joseph moved to Massachusetts. He's chosen this state. He's here, hometown now. Embraced, and he's ready to come. I have to keep smiling because if you ever see Joseph, he has like a radiant smile, and he's like, "Is it my time yet? Is it my time yet?" Yes, but in a good way because he wants to share his passion and continue. Joseph moved to Massachusetts, where his higher education took place with focus on business. 
computer technology, and theology. Joseph is the author of three poetry collections, a short storybook, and a novel. He is an author that cannot be ignored. See, I can't even ignore you. When I, I, direct contact and focus. He's an author that captures people's lives through his multiple disciplinary talents. And it's disciplinary because he realized that he understands his culture, he understands his country, and we all know that change doesn't happen overnight. And we all know that the best change comes from the example you set yourself. And if you can begin to assess yourself, to evaluate yourself, to study, to show yourself approved, which isn't a word, then you're able to utilize those skill sets, you're able to find the words, and you're able to express it in hoping that you can bring it back to your people so that they can familiarize themselves and realize and see that what they have grown under, the duresses and the stresses, that there is hope to come out of it. That's why people also come to America because they want to believe that there is something more than their disparities. Now, welcome. Dr. Joseph Holden. Again, thank you very much. And um, I've been in this country for 42 years. That's a long time. And, but every night I still dream Haiti. And for some reason or another, and when people talk about the country, of what it is going through, tears come into my eyes. I'm always crying for it, and I'm always hoping something will change, because when I left it, it was not the way it is right now. In fact, it's going backward. But my prayer is that one day we have a new Haiti. So tonight, the poems that I'm, that I'm going to read is called Zile Krasi. Or we can say a win island. Compatriot, moyo, ou se frem aksem. Se moun kap pense ak peyi, bel ti peyi noua. Non kap travay pou non kap pab libere la. Mete nan pre pou nan reforme nasyon noua. O oui. Songez belle marcher à rebord rivière. Imaginez toute la joie nous te kon gagner les n'a fait belle provision. Les n'a pensé à belle l'eau claire côté petite nous te kon a bien. Oh compatriotes, on met tête ensemble pour nous ranger belle ti pays noir. Yon zile modèle qui crée pour pour bonnet nous c'est belle bagaille pour visiter belle ti liberté ça belle ti pays belle ça qui gagne yon yon porté si naturel gros tête mon tout tout vert offre nous aspect yon paradis terrestre lisieli barré à gros pied palmis zaboka à cocoyer la mer Caraïbes là, à qui, à qui ont climat réparé, qui marchait, à qui ont des vents bien doux, n'a pas joué, ils ont allé venir, bel mouvement de l'eau qui qui contournait à qui ont arc-en-ciel, belle plage ça, belle plage blanche, tout longé rivage yo, entouré à belle fleur, tout couleur, pauvre à riche, tout le monde doit mettre ensemble pour nous pour nous reconstruire belle petit pays ça, que nous a déchiré et nous conscients, nous tous responsables de cadence pays nous, que les ancêtres nous te quitté pour nous comme héritage nous, je dis nous doit travailler à courage à bonne volonté, de manière pour nous exposer toute valeur, toute valeur nous, tradition nous, à culte nous. Patriote nous, c'est mon qui partage même intérêt avec nous. Camarades, à nous reprendre force nous pour nous travailler dans l'amour, la, tête ensemble. Devise nous 
c'est l'union fait la force. Et puis, tout. En forte nous, c'est l'unité. Merci. We in Ireland, my patriot sisters and brothers, let us think of our country like our mothers. Work hard for her liberation. Be willing to live in purpose for your win nation. Oh, do you remember walking by the rivers? Pictures, the joy it delivers. When you think of the clear waters where you wash your son and daughters, picture us coconut and palm trees, delightful blue, raveled seas. Let us recall our unique visions. Pleasure, travel to this native soil as a lover of the yellow sunshine. The green high mountain tops of heaven's blessing still drops. We know our leading teams is our destructions. It causing our island to sicken unto death. I hear not that she is poor or island of wealth. Oh, thankless witch, pay your compensation to rebuild her health. Let us not hide what our tradition teaches. Embrace. These white stones all along the beaches, the blue sky behind the rainbow. It is a sign of when for the children to start playing Lago. The sun can still give Haiti its shine. But as a patriot, you must reverse the mirror of self-love that forces one to take all and give back nothing. Compatriot brothers and sisters, our fortune is unity. Thank you. Thank you again. And we're now going to bring our focus back to our youth. And this individual has brought his heart, his soul, and his unique, diverse way of expression. When we think about expressing ourselves, we think about in a format, format of speech. The loudest language, voice, is actually unheard. And if one understand the dynamics of communications, you are taught to know that what speaks the loudest volumes is actually the, the communication that cannot be heard. And that is the silent form of communication. American Sign Language is where we're going right now. It's considered to be called ASL. It is important to understand and why is it that an actual human being, an actual person, has to recognize an entity to acknowledge it and bring it and stamp it and say, now this is considered a language? And I emphasize that because before we embrace diverse forms of speaking in various entities and diverse ways of communicating, a name and a title has been given to groups of people who have embraced a type of dialect awareness and knowledge of composing alphabet syllables and letters that then became part of their heritage to communicate effectively with one another. In our society, we are fortunate all, but we are all diverse in the way that we are birthed. Some individuals do not have the ability to see, others do not have the ability to speak, but they are as powerful as those who can because when I think about myself and what goes on in our society, what goes on in our humanity, who doesn't want to tune things out? And 
I see challenges that one would consider it a disability. I consider it the ability to have the ability to go above and beyond because you're not disabled, but you're actually abled in a greater way in our society and humanity because you've been gifted to see our society in a way that others are not. And I'm going to introduce this young man because he's been very patient. He's been sitting with his family and this is his moment, our youth. And he is, Satarius Constantino is the son of Julia and Dino Constantino. He is a student of the Marie Philip High School for the Deaf in Framingham, Massachusetts. He enjoys photography, design, American Sign Language Poetry in the Arts. In April of 2019, he received the third prize award for a competition among the deaf schools in the United States of America. Wow. That is a great story. Yes. Yes. And we're going to have the poem read in English, and we have Marion O'Neill that works, has appeared in numerous literacy journals, her first collection of poems. And I apologize because my emphasis when I hear and know of a youth, I get excited because I want to embrace them and know that the love is here and also understand that we support all no matter what because we're not challenged. We create the figment of challenge of our imagination. And I'm going to read Miriam O'Neill's brief bio and then we're gonna proceed forward. Miriam O'Neill worked for the appeared in numerous literacy journals. Her first collection of poems, we start with what we're given, was published by Kelsey Books in 2018. Her newest collection, The Body Dialogues, will be published by the Lily Poetry Review Books in January of 2020, right around the corner. Perfect. She also translates Italian literature and has been an American Literacy Translation Association, ALTA, considered ALTA. Beginning Translation Fellow. Miriam is going to read the poetry in English. And Constantino, Sotaris Constantino, and I apologize <laughs> for the last name, has been inspired by her poetry. And it is a blessing that, and a pleasure, that as we're coming to closing, that it's a duo. Because that's the, that's what I'm emphasizing, is the diversity, the embracing, and the love one for another in support. Ages, races, ethnicity, disabilities. I don't even like using the word disabilities. The abilities of all, welcome. Um, I apologize for the technology. He's going to go first. Okay, good. Yes.
think I can talk that. <sighs> oh my God, I'm in tears. Um, okay, so let's see if I can translate that for you. Um, this is a poem called um, Postcard Sardinia. And I apologize for the technology. I brought the wrong folder, so I'm reading it from this. The cliffs along the, clo the coast are covered in white thistles and specific with, speckled with goats whose bells ring like syncopated songs as they cross the road while all the cars wait. And the drivers stare at this view. Today I drove to the end of the road, or I should say, as far as the road could take me. There is so much left alone here, which I like, which I think you would like too. Come with me next time. We'll drink Canano, it's good for the heart. And we'll eat goat milk pecorino. We'll sit together above the sea and listen as the bells pleasure the wind. Thank you. That was emotional and um, Thank, thank you, thank you. It's like, it's only natural as we begin to simmer and to close because Trish, you're gonna make me cry too. It's okay because it's natural because I'm actually going into an emotional phase myself um, because it's a very important person that I'm gonna introduce and um, there's a lot of meaning behind this. Um, give me one second. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I am speaking Spanish. <laughs> okay, and um, so we're closing. And I'm very grateful because in the city of Brockton, I've endured a lot. And this one amazing woman means a lot to me. My mom is not here. She couldn't make it because I have to be in corporate all day. and. I did not coordinate the scheduling to go pick her up. And it's not like someone could have not have brought her here, but if I am to be humble, I am to say forgiveness has to be the most important tool that we have and it is diversified because you don't have to have a language to understand or be of a certain culture or of a religious faith to understand the dynamics of what forgiveness entails of. So, in my journey of life, God has always blessed me with mothers. That's why I loved our mother who sang in her native language of Haiti, because I respect mothers. Especially mothers that naturally come with faith. Faith because if you're a mother, you believe that you weren't getting fat, but something inside of you that began moving is actually a life. So you have to believe that you can carry that life to the gestational period to meet that human being. And as a mother, sometimes you keep your child and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's taken by force and at times you have to give your child up. That's part of America, that's part of every country. And mothers are special. Inez Figueroa is considered our Latino Boricua mom in the city of Brockton. She has four beautiful daughters and grandchildren that one of her daughters, Carmen Figueroa, is here. I've met her through her beautiful daughter, Ana Maria. She has amazing daughters and grandchildren. God has given me an extension of family in this community because my family is not in this community. They're in the state, but they're not here. And I've chosen to stay here because I'm too far gone into Brockton to walk away. And this is why I do what I do. Inez came to the United States from Puerto Rico 
We have now embraced Puerto Rico as part of America, yet it's still big to differ because there are challenges that even those from Puerto Rico who have come here still do not feel like they're part of America. She settled with her family in Newark, New Jersey in the early 60s. She married and had four daughters. Unfortunately, during that period of her life, she suffered from spousal abuse. Many challenges come with families from other countries. Also, there's types of cultures where male dominance is real, uh, where women who are undergoing domestic abuses endure. They do not have the ability, the strength, or power to come out because they have been forced mentally to be submissive and subject themselves to it. Children have grown up in these households. I am one. And till this day, my mother is the most humblest person. Teresa Guzman is her name. She's a Salvadorian. And it's not that she's in denial, but she's embraced forgiveness. And that's how I learned love and forgiveness and acceptance. Not to accept abuse, but to accept woman empowerment. Inez Figueroa is a trooper in the city of Brockton. She has dedicated herself above and beyond and sets the greatest example to many of diverse cultures, many. She's a mother that we all call her our mom, but she's our community Latino mom. She's passionate about assisting those who migrate here. The Latino community trust her because with this whole issues across the country about the wall, about the hatred or why all of the, the Latino community have to be singled out because they're here to harm. No, other cultures are also singled out saying that they're here to harm, no. We exist today because we are one. Our heritage, our lineage all come from all over the world. This is the melting pot of us. And Inez has dedicated many years of her time and I've attended one of the workshops and facilitated with her for the domestic violence. We've just ended the domestic violence awareness. She assists women and children of our community. And believe it or not, there are men who get abused too. It's not just a woman thing. She is a confidant to even men who have to talk about being abused. In masculinity, it's not an easy subject to touch, but she's there. She has that comfortness in her that brings about trust. And most, she will go above and beyond to make sure that she's there to assist. She goes to the Brockton District Courthouse. She'll go to City Hall. She'll engage with DCF. She is retired. She is not supported uh, financially as a nonprofit. She utilizes her own resources, pays market rent. She's not supported by a housing assistant entity. She pays her rent with her daughter Carmen and her children. And every day she wakes up as if she was not retired. She wakes up at five, gets ready out the door before eight, spends the whole day dedicated to this community. And Inez Figueroa, if you ever meet her and call her as if no one else existed, she gives you that feeling. And this is your moment in your time. And these roses are the shades of all the colors that come from you, from white to pink to darker pink to red. Because when I think about red, I think about the blood of Jesus. When I think about red, I think about womanhood. When I think about pink, I think about the innocence and the transitions from female going to adult womanhood. And when I think about white, it's as pure as one can be. And when you think about the off-white and all the colors that it entails, it's as beautiful as she. And Inez said to me when she sat down, she says, you know, I'm doing this for you. That's what touched my emotion because she meant it. Because in this city, I've gone through a lot. And if she wasn't with me during my most hardest challenges, that made a difference because she just says, you know what? I'm gonna let you know I'm here for you. And if you ask me, she's there for everybody, but I feel, I feel like she's there for me. And she has that feeling with everybody in Brockton. They feel like she's there for them only. 
It's time for you to be embraced in Brockton. We've talked about this. She lacks the support in this community, in her passions. You are Boricua for a reason. You rep Puerto Rico for a reason. God gave you that for a reason. You raised the flag in the city and fought for it for a reason. The city did not embrace it. She, why does somebody have to fight and advocate to raise their flag in a city that they have chosen to financially support, to support through voting, to support through advocacy, to support in the upbringing of your generations? It shouldn't be that way. And now it's an honor and a pleasure to introduce Inez, and I want her to disclose her education. I want her to disclose the association because these are, this is her journey of life. This is her backbone. This is her build up and makeup. And at this time, if I keep talking, I'll probably just end up shedding the tear that I'm holding in. I love you, Ma. You know that, right? Welcome. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hola. 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 <laughs> Hola. My name is Inez Figueroa, and I'm not a poetry person. I don't write it. And I, I, this one that I'm going to say today is because my life is I was a victim of domestic violence for many years from, from the father of my children. And uh, when I see this poem, is, I said, I'm gonna read this poem. I know last month was the battle of domestic violence, and we did a lot of uh, activities on the domestic violence. It's my microphone. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say it in Spanish, and then I'm gonna read it in English. Hoy recibí flores. Hoy recibí flores. No era mi cumpleaños o ningún otro día especial. Anoche me golpeó y me discutimos y me golpeó muchísimo. Sé que estaba arrepentido porque anoche se arrepintió y me regaló flores. Hoy recibí flores. De nuevo, nuestro aniversario o ningún otro día especial. Anoche me aventó contra la pared, empezó a aficiarme, parecía una pesadilla lo que yo estaba viviendo. Yo no podía creer que era real. Desperté esta mañana toda dolorida, toda dolorida. Toda, toda con muchas marcas negras. Pero sé que se arrepintió porque hoy me regaló flores. Hoy recibí flores. No era un día de madre, ningún otro día especial. Anoche volvió y me golpeó. Y fue peor que todas las otras veces. Si lo dejo, ¿qué haré? ¿Cómo cuidar de mis hijos? Y el dinero, ¿dónde lo consigo? Le tengo mucho miedo y tengo miedo de irme. Pero sé que debe estar arrepentido porque hoy me regaló flores. Hoy recibí flores. Fue un día muy especial. Fue el día de mi funeral. Finalmente me mató. Me golpeó hasta la muerte. Si solamente me hubiera reunido, me hubiera ido, no estuviera aquí hoy muerta. Mat y dejarlo hoy no estuviera aquí muerta. I'm going to say it in English. And it's going to be so hard. Read it in English. So, um, I got flowers today. It wasn't any my birthday or any other day special. We have a first argument. Last night he said a lot of cruel things that really hurt me. I know he was sorry, 
and didn't mean to because I got flowers today. I got flowers today. It was his Mother's Day or any other special day. Last night, he beat me again and again. It was much worse than all the time. If I leave him, what am I going to do? How will I take care of my kids? What about money? I'm afraid of him. I'm scared to leave. But now he must be sorry because today he sent me flowers. I got flowers today. Today was a very special day. It was the day of my funeral. Last night, he finally killed me. He beat me to death. If I only had the gallery enough courage and strength to leave him, I would not have flowers today. I would be dead. And if I don't have the courage to leave my husband, I will not be able to read this poem to you today. I will be dead. Thank you. And that's reality. That's also what makes us diverse. Taking that first step of courage, faith, hope, and belief that one day we will have world peace. It's always a statement that is commonly known before we were born, after we will pass, is that we will always hope that we can have world peace. And the one thing that we can do is create a peace entity within ourselves, share it with others, and it's okay, Christina. It's okay for emotions here because we're human and we're real. And we're about to close. Trish, I'm going to share a little bit of our local resident because she's, um, she's compelled right now with emotion. Trish has joined us in poetry in Brockton. Trish has a lot of hurt. And um, when she joined us, I just had a conversation at our Boricua mom's house because I met Trish as being Carmen's friend. And I talk and I'm like, oh yes, I'm going to do this poetry event. And Trish just had radar because I did not know that there was a poet amongst us. And when I say poet, it means that she's already evolved herself to articulate and to write because she has found a venue to help her through her hurts, through her pains. And Trish, I review the videos thanks to the Brockton Cable Access TV that Mark Lindy comes dedicate. I thank you for that because Sometimes when we speak, if it is not written, it just goes. And that's why it's important to embrace and support our libraries because they remain on the shelves, ready for the next person to read and pass it along. I wanna thank you for coming here, but I wanna continue to encourage our group and the people who are watching to know that there is healing, there is power, words, creativity ought to continue to be stimulated because we are losing it and we're sending the wrong messages to our youth. Social media is a good entity, but it's a hype. It's a misleading entity and it is raising our children for us. We need to embrace the arts and in the city of Brockton, I have joined Philip Hosaurus, I have joined now I have actually accepted a calling of my life, and that is to bring forth the importance of literature, of English, of languages, of creativity, of things that make us unique, but most to embrace diversity. We have to tarry along, and we have to get out of our comfort zones. 
And as a faith believer, I desire to also see diversity embraced where, Dr. Pollock, we can go to a Haitian church. And even if I don't understand, I could just know that I'm in the presence of God's spirit. Go to a Greek Orthodox church. Go to my sisters and brethren of the Muslim faith in here. Because when you hear a moan, a groan, and one expresses their word, you feel the energies. And that's what we have here right now. And that's why we're full of emotion, because we tapped into a sensitive area. So I thank everyone for coming here. This was my first annual host of this type of event. I look forward to future upcoming events. And next time, I will make sure that my mom is here, God willing. And I thank this opportunity, Philip, because you were led to do what you do, but you came across my path. And you believed that I can join you in your vision and mission. That's an honor. When somebody believes that you have something that you don't even realize what you have, I know I'm out here, I'm free spirited, and everybody knows my alley vibes, but I don't see how people see, but they see my voice, they see my energy as a form of inspiration because I truly, truly believe in the individuality of everyone's diverse makeup. So thank you. We have refreshments in the back. This is your time to engage, so to socialize, and respectively stating to have safe travels home. Peace be on to everybody. My faith and prayers are with you. And most, I'm sending out energy hugs because I thank you for being here.